Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2015 American post-apocalyptic film called Air. Before we start, be aware there are spoilers. In the near future, the President of the United States is addressing the nation that his administration is doing all it can to ensure that their way of life continues. A reporter asks if this statement is related to doctors, scientists, and engineers being whisked away in the night and taken to the underground shelters. The president assures them that the priority is to ensure the safety of all American citizens. An undisclosed amount of time later, and an engineer named Bauer wakes from sleep. He climbs out of his pod feeling a little groggy. He starts to examine some computer displays before another engineer named Cartwright also starts to wake. Bauer asks if he is having a nightmare. He can't let him out yet until he adapts to breathing the air type. Cartwright breathes into a bag and then they clock in. They check the air quality above and note that it is still toxic. The other facilities have also checked in, but communication between facilities is not possible. Cartwright looks at pictures of his friends and family before Bauer reminds him that they are all dead. He hands him some data, which Cartwright examines and determines that there was an earthquake above. They have to go to examine the other sleepers as Cartwright continues to inspect the data. Behind a picture frame, Cartwright pulls out a picture of his wife, Abby, and begins to hallucinate that she is there and speaks with her. He is suddenly interrupted by a communication from Bauer. Cartwright reports that there was no damage from the seismic activity. Abby asks if he told her about them. Bauer can hear him talking to himself. Cartwright assures Bauer that the sleepers are still alive and are the seed to humanity. Bauer grumbles that the two of them are wasting their whole lives down here so that the sleepers may survive. Cartwright believes that they are saving humanity. Cartwright discovers a formula to calculate how long they should have until the surface is uninhabitable again. He believes that they may not be stuck here for too much longer, maybe only 20 more shifts. In the background, an old news report tells of a hybrid nuclear chemical weapon attack that happened on the surface before the president declared a state of emergency. All the while, there is a clock ticking down in the background as this shift draws to a close. Bauer goes to the bathroom as Cartwright carries out more checks. Abby's illusion appears again and says that he should think about how good it would feel to touch her in reality. Suddenly, a fire breaks out in the room. Cartwright calls Bauer to bring a fire extinguisher. It is Cartwright's sleeping pod that has caught a light. After the fire is put out, they discover that Bauer is injured. As the countdown reaches zero, the lights go out and the air supply switches off. Cartwright reads the manual and discovers that there is an emergency override. They have to climb through a vent to reach it. Cartwright finds a red valve that Bauer warns him will allow the air in from outside. Bauer finds the valve that operates the emergency air supply and turns it on. They go back downstairs panting but then realize that it isn't working. Bauer reveals to Cartwright that he had a wife and three daughters. Although the criteria for getting the job was to be unmarried, he lied to get the job. He didn't believe all this end of the world stuff. Bauer says that he and Cartwright are family now. Suddenly the power comes back on and the reserve air supply kicks in. The clock resets for two hours, so they get up and go to the storeroom to search for spare parts. They can't find what they need, so they look for other storage rooms on the plants. They find an area that is sealed off to conserve oxygen, and Cartwright suspects that this is where the parts will be. They both go down, although Cartwright is feeling claustrophobic. They hear a noise and wonder if it's an animal, although there's been no oxygen there so nothing could be alive. The duo search through lockers and find some old cameras on the floor. They muse over whether they still work. Abby is standing near Cartwright as he searches. Eventually, he finds the parts that they are after and they bring it back to repair the sleeping pod. Cartwright suggests that he goes to sleep first in case something goes wrong. He stalls for a few moments so Bauer climbs into Cartwright's pod instead. Cartwright tells him to indicate if there is a problem. As the pod activates, he hears the sound of a leak. Bauer then says that the air is getting thinner in the pod. As Cartwright leaves to check, Bauer calls out to him to let him out, but there's no response. The plastic over the pod sucks down to envelop Bauer. 
He struggles and starts to suffocate. Cartwright appears at the last minute and cuts him out of there, and he coughs and chokes back to life. Cartwright apologizes, but Bauer thinks he may have been trying to kill him. Cartwright tries to reason with him that he was supposed to have been inside, but Bauer had insisted. They go to look at the sleepers and decide that they will take one of their places. Cartwright says that they are supposed to be looking after them, but Bauer insists that they pick one. Cartwright picks up some morphine to inject into the sleeper, but then he sees Abby who convinces him not to do it. Bauer tells him he'll do it himself then. Abby then implores Cartwright not to let him do it. Cartwright says that they are techs, not murderers. They have an obligation to keep these people alive. Bauer punches him and tells him that someone has to die down here. Cartwright fights back and tells him that he has another idea. They study the plans and find a code written on the map that matches the code of another facility. Cartwright believes that this ABC facility must be right next to them. There must be people in that facility with spare parts. They will have to break the air seal to get to it, which may mean flooding the entire compound with contaminated air. Cartwright suits up and he heads through the doorway. He finds a dead body at the door. He waits for the air filters to finish and then moves forward. He observes lots of blue dust that Bauer tells him is the airborne contaminant. Another old news report is playing, telling that there are rumors that the public shelters are not safe against the chemical weapons. Bauer manages to get the cameras working and can see Cartwright. Cartwright finds a door leading to the other facility, but it's stuck. Bauer encourages him to push harder and it gains entry. He reports back that nothing seems to be working. Abby encourages him not to give up. Bauer sends him back about 10 yards where he finds the air ducts. Cartwright feels uneasy, but he has to climb through them to reach the main area. Bauer notices that he has 22 minutes left as he directs Cartwright through the vents. One way leads back to their own facility. He finds lots of dead bodies on the way. They start to lose radio signals, so Bauer tries to boost it. He looks for a knife, but finds that it is back in the toolbox rather than where he left it. He goes to check the video footage of how it got there. Cartwright suddenly realizes that something isn't right. He makes it into the main area and starts to look around. The ceiling opens onto the surface of the planet, and as he looks out, he can see that the city has been decimated by a nuclear bomb. Cartwright realizes that this must have happened a long time ago. He finds the sleepers' chambers, but they have been destroyed, despite the fact that they checked in today and every other time. Bauer says that it's a lie. The whole system. You can't trust anyone. He has been looking at Cartwright's wall of pictures. Cartwright realizes that there is no network, just a computer telling them they are not alone. It's designed to stop them losing their minds. Abby appears, telling him that they are not alone. Bauer watches video footage of what Cartwright was doing when he was trapped in the pod. He notices that he exhibited strange behavior whilst he was flailing in the pod. Cartwright starts to think that they may be the only ones left alive. He makes his way back as he is running low on air. He goes through the door and begins the decontamination process. From behind a door, Bauer shows him the knife and asks where he thinks he found it. He says that it was in the toolbox next to Cartwright's sleeping pod. He says he watched the video footage. Cartwright wants to talk about this. Bauer points a gun at him and asks if he's gone nuts or did he try to kill him. He is a danger to him and the sleepers. Bauer won't let him back in, and so he races back into the ABC facility. Abby points him in the direction of the air ducts. Bauer is telling him that the betrayal and lies hurt him the most. Cartwright takes the route leading back to his own facility. Bauer screams down the radio to him as he crawls back into the facility and removes his protective clothing. Cartwright informs Abby that he made it and everything will be okay. As he walks through, Bauer shoots at him and then follows him. Cartwright tells him that they may be the only ones alive. He hunts him through the facility and tells him that he can't let him go for fear of him killing him in his sleep. Cartwright manages to trap him in a room and escapes into a medical bay. He collects some morphine. Abby pleads with him to kill Bauer or he will kill him. He has to do it for them. He returns to the computer room with a gas bottle in his hand. Bauer suddenly shoots at him. As he lays on the floor bleeding, he waves a photograph at Bauer and starts talking to Abby. Bauer screams that there is nobody there and they start to fight. Cartwright runs away and Bauer picks up the photograph. He looks at the sleeper's pods and matches the picture to one of them. 
He calls out to Cartwright, telling him that he knows he's in there. Abby is one of the sleepers. Bauer threatens to kill her unless he comes out. Cartwright appears behind him and stabs him with a morphine syringe. Bauer points the gun at him, but then he holds it down and lays on the floor. Cartwright approaches him, but Bauer tells him to take care of his girl. He slowly dies with five minutes left on the clock. Cartwright talks to Abby, telling her that he is alive, the only one now keeping this place functional, talking to himself, sleeping in the bed of the man he killed. He goes back in the cryo sleep and the air stops. Sometime later, the power flickers back on and the cameras scan the facility. The sleeper's pods start to open and they begin to wake. They emerge from their pods. Abby also wakes, breathing slowly. As she climbs out, she is approached by a bearded Cartwright. She hugs him and tears fall down his face. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.